Dog Should Never Eat Chocolate by Hack Shuck. I'm no businesswoman, or a very bad one, which is more or less the same thing. But I'm not motivated by profit, at least not the kind you can spend in the mortal realm. I inherited enough so I never have to work again anyway, but I have a hobby which keeps me occupied. I own a patch of land, deep in a freezing forest, far away from prying eyes. The hard soil covers several shallow graves. Everyone beneath my babies died in a truly terrible way. How do I know this? Don't ask. <laughs> my babies. Doesn't that sound cute? But I do love every one of my products, like most mothers love their newborns. Though mine never loved me. Boo hoo. There are always 666. When one graduates from my blasphemous kindergarten, they are replaced. 666 sounds like a dumb heavy metal cliche, I know. But while some of the satanic shit works and some doesn't, I try to throw as much tender loving evil into my hobby as possible. It's not an exact science, but it gets results. It takes a decade to bring my babies to fruition. Over three and a half thousand nights spent chanting, encanting, begging, pleading, sacrifices too, not just my own time. We're talking dogs, cats, rabbits, anything domesticated, loved. Dogs are best. I've always been more of a dog person than a cat person. I've honed the art of pet napping so perfectly, I could write a guidebook, but then who'd buy it? Maybe one or two weirdos reading this story. Blood soaks through the soil and nourishes my many children. Yellowing grimoires costing a year of your salary are duct taped together after years of enthusiastic usage. Curses, which can curdle someone's soul in seconds, are screamed into the darkness night after night, and my babies grow. I can hear them whispering venomous ambitions when I place my ear to their feet. Gnarled fingers wrap restlessly. Sighs of anxiety swirl in their stormy guts. If they had stomachs, they'd rumble like thunder. Then, December comes, and I load up my truck. You might have seen me by the side of the desolate patch of road, just outside of town. You might have even stopped and took out your wallet, tempted by my insanely low prices. Like I said, I'm no businesswoman. I scan the local newspapers each January. I find the news channel so vulgar. Small town stories of sadness and tragedy are infinitely preferable. I smile with delight as I read about the evils I've spread, but my widest smiles are saved for the little kitties who see me stood on the roadside with my magic mark sign year after year. It marks something significant in their small, shortened lives. Look, look, Mom, Dad, they yell, their eyes dancing like puppies in an oven. The Christmas tree lady is here. 